congratulations. Thank you. Everyone involved. Thank you for having us Thank and you. for y'all staying and yeah. <laughs> we'll get to the audience and we'll take some questions in a moment, but I want to start. Um, we'll start with some of the filmmaking and I want to include um, all the actors as well, but I want to maybe just kind of set the table. And um, as we all know, after you see this movie, folks have just been through an experience. So take a breath. Um, I know that um, I know that this film, you know, I've talked about it. I know this film comes from a personal place. So maybe as a way of starting the conversation, Trey, yeah. um, if you could talk a little bit about that personal place that the film comes from, and then we'll talk about how um, how it evolved yeah. as well. Um, yeah, uh, it, it's hard to easily break down because yeah. I think it, it is very very personal um, in. Um, you know, the whole narrative kind of functions as like autobiography that goes to fictional narrative, back to autobiography, then fictional narrative, and like in some instances recreating real life stuff, um, either between me or loved ones. Um, and But there's a lot in the movie, uh, and uh, f I think ideas and different things were brewing for so long, I was like, how does it all come together into a story? What were some of the earliest aspects for you, when, and, and what were some of the earliest aspects that, that were kind of the seeds yeah. that, that started Waves? It evolved over a period of time. Uh, it, it was just a natural, you know, first it was uh, music and teens, you know, and then, you know, I, you, I tear my shoulder in wrestling and world falls apart and then it becomes a lot of stuff from there and then, uh, you know, you go through some grief for other things in life, you get on the other side of it and have perspective and it keeps growing and building. So it was kind of that thing that was always there that kept um, that kept molding and shifting wow. uh, as life was happening, basically. And then I think essentially, though, it was it wasn't ready or it didn't click how to all fit together until uh, until s some certain things happened. And then I think a big part too was meeting Kel, meeting Kel on my last movie and collaborating. You know. So so we're gonna get to that in a second. But when it was music and teens, uh, how long ago was that? But when I was in high school, uh, yeah. so like eleven. So you had these these notions of what you might want to explore in a story someday, or was was it was it was not it, even? It was it was like it was literally like I was obsessed with Days and Confused, and it was like music and teens, and for today, yeah. uh, the movie's very different, I think, from that. But some yeah. of those elements are there. <laughs> yeah. And and so as what I'm what I'm hearing you say, and what I'm thinking about as I'm um, pondering what we've just seen is that. As you matured, new layers kind of were, were added to this, um, this narrative and then things you encountered in your life or people and loved ones that have the, around you um, kind of added context, added uh, themes, Absolutely. elements. 100%. Um, you and Kelvin had worked together on your previous film um, and at what point did you have a conversation with him or maybe Kelvin, at what point did Trey say to you, hey, I got this thing I want to talk to you about, or how did that conversation start, the idea of you guys working together again? I made him promise me at the end of the movie, <laughs> of it comes and I was like, you have to put me in your next movie, and he was like, sure. And so, was it like sure, yes, or sure? Like, sure, like, we'll see. Oh. <laughs> we'll see how the movie cuts. I was begging him to work with me again. <laughs> no, yeah. We, we, we had such a really cool like friendship and relationship that became like, he became like my big brother in a lot of ways. So yeah. like a year later, he, um, he, he hit me up and he's like, let's get coffee. And I was like, okay. What's it about? He's like, well, I'm ready to start the movie. I was like, okay, cool. And um, and he told me there are two parts. There's the brother in the first half who's the wrestler, and there's the boyfriend in the second half. And I was like, well, what's the, the more challenging part? I was like, give me the best stuff if you're gonna tell me first. And then he was like, he's like, well, you can't play sports, so I think the wrestling might be might be the thing that really drives you. So um, that that was like the intro, and then from there, eight months before the movie. That's when we really started getting into it, and it was there was no, it was in the script. He had his concept, and he was writing, and he said, "I'm going to tailor this role for you." Yeah. So uh, it became the conversations: of what, what was my relationship with my father, and what was my relationship romantically, and um, what was it like growing up in the South and your high school, and what did that feel like? You know, just being a young black man in America. What does that mean to you? Um, so, and he's such a egoless, just beautiful and easy listener that he just took it all in. So when I finally read the script, I was just like, I was so blown away and just shocked. I was like, 
whoa, you really actually do care about me. And, and this process is so much easier when someone truly loves you and wants to listen to understand someone else's walk of life and experience and reflect that so honestly in a script. So um, that, was, that was the introduction to, to how I kind of got to meet Tyler. I, I'm curious because obviously you didn't grow up a young black man in America, um, did not. but the two of you collaborated to build this character. So tell me about the kinds of conversations you all had and tell me about um, how, you, how you built this character, how you framed in, the, in the, the writing and collaboration process before we're talking about bringing it to screen, some of the, the ways that you two collaborated to, to create the character. Yeah, well, well, I mean, it did start with kind of, we call them like mini therapy sessions where uh, uh, when I first started trying to write, whether it was text messages or phone calls, just talking about that time in our lives, you know, um, uh, what it felt like, pressures, relationships with parents, lovers, school pressures, commonalities, differences, sort of everything, and then, and everything and anything and uh, just picking apart headspaces and anything and then I was writing and then I sent him a draft uh, yeah like eight months before we started shooting and then he would uh, uh, you know we'd keep working we would he would like uh, Kelvin's incredibly intelligent and smart and we'll analyze and talk about everything we'll spend three hours talking about the color of Tyler's truck or something and why. And so we would do that for a minute as well. And he, you know, he would give me feedback and I would be, okay, so what would this actually be like between you and your parents or you and your father? And am I getting close? Is this getting anywhere? And then he'd give me detailed feedback and notes and then I would go back and write more then send it to him and get feedback until, I think until it felt like we felt good about where we were at and could share it with other people and actors and everything. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about let's talk about that piece of it. Let's talk about sharing it with other actors. We have two um, terrific actors, and both of you, congratulations on your performances and in, on these roles. Um, maybe talk about the process of sharing it with um, each of the women on this stage, and 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 how you uh, shared and framed um, their characters from your perspective and from the perspective of each of you. Yeah. Kind of those early conversations. Uh, well, for me, you know. It started with a place uh, making a movie with someone I love. Um, there's love and trust built up and that's a very special energy and we're just trying to s spread that and filter it. And um, so like I wanted that with every single person even if we didn't know each other. So <laughs> Renee and uh, Alexa, we did not know each other. Um, uh, it was different. So Lex uh, auditioned and just blew me away and I had never seen this girl in anything and she rocked my world. And then, um, and what then, struck you? What what was it? Do you remember the honesty? It was saw? just truth. Like you could feel what she was doing in that. T it wasn't artificial. It wasn't ma manufactured. It was real, and it was it. And it was. And she has this girl's gonna rule the world. Like she has the most special spirit, uh, and she's just an incredible human being and incredibly talented, and not just acting. Everything else. Hi. So <laughs> I I love Thank you. you. <laughs> Tell me the other side of that. Tell me the other side from your perspective. You. Um, yeah, honestly, I, I auditioned and then shortly after I had a FaceTime with Trey and it was like FaceTimes can be really awkward <laughs> if you don't know the person and it it just felt so natural and the conversation was so fluid and it felt like I knew him forever and remember you were sitting and there were like palm trees behind you and it was just like a really nice conversation and I could like read your energy through the phone and it just felt right. And the two of you, tell me about uh, tell me about when you tell me about the first time the two of you met. We actually, it was pretty crazy. We met before I even auditioned and knew about the film. Um, he was living with a, a friend of mine and their roommates, and I went over there to see her. And Calvin was there, and Calvin and I ended up meeting, and we had like we all had so much fun that night, and we filmed like a little. He shot a video of me on his iPhone. He actually sent it to Trey and. It was to the song that's in the film oh, when he's um, the text message, the fight. text message oh, fight, yeah. and that chart used song. to be in the in the longer yeah. movie that was in there. Too. Yes. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. I cooked he, him some. He, he looked at uh, that video. That on his video. Phone. What? Yeah, yeah, and then that's why I changed. I put the focus in. For the text director's message. cut. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it honestly all felt. so so I, it's like I don't want to use the word like divine, but like it did. Like 
just meeting him was so natural and we got along right away and I really appreciated and respected the way that he took on his roles and how much care he put into everything and and uh, you know we just kind of like we dove into it shortly after mm -hmm. you know finding out about the projects and she's so strong and that was the biggest thing we and Trey talked about was like whoever's gonna play this girl she has to know how to like she has to know how to scrap <laughs> and she has to be able to throw down and I think what we saw in that tape and just seeing her in person was just like she has a personality and identity and a life of her of, of her own and she was gonna bring that to the character and it was just so she I remember even talking about all the specific things about Alexis and she was like that's Alexis and that's Alexa it's two different things <laughs> and I was just like I loved it I was like I'm glad you know who you you, who you playing? <laughs> but it was so it was so fun. So yeah, we just we vibed on like a creative level and, and a personal level. Yeah. And and by the way, they were still filming videos like right before we came out on stage. Yeah. So check Kelvin. Was that your Instagram that you put that on? Yeah. yeah. So check. You can see what he was check, what they were doing. Check it out. <laughs> you could see what they were doing a few minutes ago. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Renee, I would love to talk to you about um, the, the your character is so is such an important. Um, it's not just about an adult figure, but it's a really grounding character, I think. Um, and so much um, there's so much uh, recklessness and energy, uh, you know, sprawling out from so many different in so many different directions, especially in the first part of this movie. Um, I feel like your character. Um, is such an important kind of pivot point, but also kind of a grounding mm -hmm. point. And so I'm wondering uh, whether that resonates for you, but also sort of when, when you when you read and talked with read the script, talked with Trey and, and your colleagues here, sort of what were some of the things that were that were kind of meaningful to you? What kind of the the things that made you want to uh, to dive into this? I was excited um, about the idea of a, a movie about high school kids where you actually heard anything from the parents, where there was anything that they did um, or, you know, that there was any, um, that they had any, uh, there was any window into what it feels like to be them. Um, because typically you don't care when you're dealing with high school kids in a movie. So I loved that about it. And I also loved, you know, the idea of working with Sterling K. Brown. And I loved the idea of working with this filmmaker because uh, his reputation preceded him. Um, so that was all really exciting to me. And when I showed up to do it, um, I discovered these beautiful people. And, um, and we had, you know, we had a huge talent I think I was also concerned. Um, I, have, I have two young children, and I had um, a so, I have a son, and I I was worried that you know how are you going to do this? How are you going to tell a story where you know this beautiful young black son does something in this film that um, you know how can we recover from that? What what happens from that? And do we want to see that on screen? And one thing that I love about the fact that we have new young filmmakers coming into the game is that he understood you know talking to Trey understood all of my concerns and um, and still felt like the right thing to do was to cast this film that this way and um, and I loved uh, I just loved the bravery in that and I loved um, the fact that I wasn't sure until I saw the film <laughs> that um, it was the right thing to do to cast it this way and I was uh, just so proud to see um, how much he listened to who we were. I felt um, as much as it was written about Catherine, there was um, there was a lot to bring to it from my own experience as a mother. Mm -hmm. And I think it's funny that you think um, I was grounding because I think as a mother, most often you feel like the opposite of that. <laughs> and I think Catherine's a bit of a mess in a lot of this movie, definitely the second half of this movie. Um, she's a mess. Um, and she's kind of not present, um, even though she's there. And I love that we get to see her take that journey in the yeah. film and figure out her way back to this family. Um, it, was a, it was a journey of love and I think a really brave journey. And um, I'm really glad I got to be a part of it. Um, before we take questions from the audience, I want to switch gears and geek out on some of the, the, the filmmaking that's on display here. So if you'll pardon me, we'll do that for just a moment before we give the audience a chance. Because you're you're <laughs> you're, you're 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 playing with so much cinematically, and there's so many different directions we can take this. But um, 
we can talk about aspect ratio and why that's important to you as a tool in your toolbox. Um, I think the first thing that I think about is also camera movement and how, how you use the movement of the camera early in the film to establish the relationship and the energy between these two characters. So can you maybe talk about um, more broadly just sort of some of the, the conversations and the thoughts that you were having as you were thinking about how the film was going to look? Yeah, um, I think in a broad way of looking at it, pretty much everything we're doing from the aspect ratio to the cinematography to the camera movement to the uh, sound to the music is all to put you in these characters' uh, heads and hearts. But primarily, that's like Tyler and then that's Emily because I think it's, a, it's meant to be a very subjective, immersive experience and you're really only seeing it through Tyler and Emily until key moments at the end of their journeys when it's spreading out and we're grasping everyone else. But up until that point, almost everything you either see or hear is through them. So every choice we're making is to sort of, you know, emotionally or spiritually or literally connect you to what they're going through. And everything's motivated by that. So if that's one of the first scenes um, <laughs> between Ty and Lex on the bridge, with a camera spinning between them, it's because that's, that's how Ty feels at that moment and that's how their love feels at that moment. Mm -hmm. Their love's like a bottle of fire and, um, at that age, you know, for me it was like my room and then my car. Once I got my car, no one could mess with that space and it was sort of ultimate freedom. And the only way to sort of visually represent that I felt that felt honest to Ty and honest to Ty and Lex's relationship was to spin between their bodies, you know, and dance with them. And so that's a moment. And then, you know, another example, like, like when Emily takes over the movie and basically this huge devastation and tragedy has occurred, we're in four by three, shallow focus, longer lens is barely moving because she's her world's fallen apart and she's she's isolated in her environment and in a terrible place and basically everything we're trying to do is to get you into their world and their headspace and feel with them so whether that's literally looking through them or feeling like you're sitting on that bench with that even father and daughter later like we're putting um atmosphere in the rears in a certain way to make it feel like you're just sitting on that bench with them. And we're just trying to make it something very visceral and experiential um, and hopefully emotional that the, the goal is to just hit you in a guttural place as you're watching it and then stay in your head and keep thinking about it and everything. Maybe to pick up on that from um, from Kelvin and Alexa's point of view, uh, sort of anatomy of a scene, uh, maybe help us understand uh, the physical space in that in that early scene with the camera spinning around, and we're, it's our introduction to each of you. Um, maybe just kind of paint a picture for us of what's happening outside the frame or what we're not seeing, and maybe how many times you had to shoot that and how you sort of got that physicality right, the, the blocking, I guess. It honestly felt like we were just driving on a bridge <laughs> having <laughs> a lot of fun. I think that's something Trey does a lot is, is, is you, the, we weren't really aware of the camera most of the time, like you do some like magic trick yeah. of he could be right here and you don't even like see it, you're just here. And so it was just fun. Like we just, we just had fun and, and, and I guess the camera was spinning around us. <laughs> like I don't think we were aware of that. We were just like in that moment. I mean, yeah. I mean, you can put your foot out the car. You can swerve around. It was real, by the way. It was you very know, dangerous. <laughs> you can just you just have freedom to play and just really kind of go there. And you know, what the great things about it is in the script, he talks about the aspect ratios, and he kind of says mm -hmm. the camera's gonna spin and it's gonna change here. And so you you have like a, a visual understanding of what it might look like. And so when you're reading it, you're kind of even immersing yourself into yeah. what the performance could potentially be mm -hmm. with that. Um, and you really understand the headspace and tonally where we are and what the movie is. So I think that's a gift that we never really get either. You know, most of the time you walk on the set and you kind of go, okay, so this is the tone of the movie. Or maybe you finish the movie and you're like, oh, all right, so that was the tone of the movie. Yeah. I missed it. Yeah. But um, <laughs> this was really great because I didn't have to worry about that, you know? I was really struck by something I learned, and then we're going to go to the audience. But what, what did Trey do with the script and with music? It's something that was unique, at least from... For me, hearing about it, it sounded really like an interesting way to introduce the script for you. There was something with... Trey, what did you do with the script? Uh, <laughs> it, well, it was just unorthodox in the sense I wanted it to feel uh, hopefully as visceral as it could feel 
to the spirit of what the movie would be. So there was, um, all the music was embedded in it, uh, and you could literally listen to it as you're playing. You know, we had to create, uh, because of my brilliant producer here, Jim Wilson, we got, uh, uh, created a website where when we weren't just send, sending a PDF, sending a website, and people would have to read it and play the music as they'd go along, and there were, Big, big uh, fonts, small fonts, colors, uh, ratio. Yeah, really for emotion. Like, for emotion. yeah. So like, if it's even a fight, there was like dueling dialogue with big fonts for the expressive times uh, when it suited, and camera movement and ratios explained. But all in the sense of just trying to make it feel. Hopefully, reading it and listening to it as close as to what the movie could feel in sort of script form. You Kelvin, know? was that informative? Was that useful? Was that? Oh, it was so helpful not? for me. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I mean, it just you really start to because the, the music helps you understand the characters' psychology and where yeah. they're at, also how they're what, what they're feeling filling themselves with. Because a lot yeah. of the songs will be songs that Tyler would listen to, mm -hmm. so that would help. And in, in terms of the camera stuff, then you kind of well, if you know a Trey Edward Schultz film, mm -hmm. then you kind of know what this is gonna look like. Um, so you can be mindful of it without overthinking it. You know what I mean? You can be take it in and then just be present on the day. So um, it, it, it just really helps you kind of map it out and know what you're getting into, really, yeah. you know? Um, let's see what uh, folks in the audience want to ask you. And we have a microphone. Walter has a microphone. So let's go right there first. And then I think I saw another hand over there. But I was wondering why um, when they had the courtroom, well, two things. First of all, I thought the scene, the best scene in the movie, or one of the best scenes in the movie, was the father and the daughter fishing. I thought that mm, was I agree. outstanding. Um, but I feel confused about the, um, the courtroom scene. Why did he plead guilty to second degree murder without putting up some sort of a fight? I'm a lawyer, but that's not why I'm asking that question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also a parent, and I'm thinking that, you know, this is done, it can't be undone, so why didn't they fight? It seemed more like, you know, maybe involuntary manslaughter or something. He was clearly on drugs. So why didn't his family fight for him and defend him so that there was some, I felt that there was no opportunity of redemption um, offered to that character. Sure. Uh, we just tried to make it realistic to the situation. Um, I think if you, especially if you, uh, you know, when you're in it and you're feeling that the whole goal is to understand how he got to that moment and to feel it with him and, uh, uh, yeah, and kind of live it with him, but uh, everyone else is not there but him, you know, and I think he has an enormous amount of guilt for everything that's happened and, um, yeah, we just, like, looking into research and everything, we just tried to make it authentic and realistic to the situation. Um, I don't, I mean, I think his family absolutely would fight for him and everything, but, uh, uh, yeah, when talking, you know, it should have talked to you and the lawyers I talked to in this situation, <laughs> that seemed, uh, that seemed uh, realistic, especially for South Florida and everything, so, yeah. Uh, further down in the center of the, uh, there's one back and then in front, yeah. Hi. Hi, first of all, lovely film. Um, second, um, I'm really interested in the gender dynamics of the movie. I'm just thinking about Tyler's like care for his appearance and how that seems to be a specifically black version of masculinity or even like the amount of like emotional labor that Emily does for the men in her life. And just like thinking about how race and gender play into the characters and how much of that was like thought out in your guys' conversations and like, or like was there reading that went in behind that to see uh, how to best portray that in the film? Sure, yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's kind of broad, I don't know where to start. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was, it was uh, everything. Um, as soon as we were all together and uh, in this situation, we were just, uh, yeah, I don't know, talking through everything and just trying to make it honest and real. Um, yeah. Um, but we're talking about masculinity and Tyler? Yeah, I mean, that that's a good, it's a good jumping off point. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, I mean, it comes to the blonde hair. It comes to the his appearance of the body. I think it has so much to do with uh, uh, with that what an athlete looks like. We talked a lot about yeah. wrestlers, and you know, I did three months of wrestling training before the movie, and every day he would just be like, "Get mean," and you know, you need to look great, you need to eat this, and you need to do this. So it was like these crazy diets. So it kind of makes you become self-obsessed 
otherwise. And, and I think with Tyler's case too, he's always trying to live up to his dad. He has this, he idolizes his father in so many ways. And I think when you look at, I mean, Sterling K. Brown's like 6'2 or something like that. And then he like jacked in the movie, I don't know if you saw. But, and, <laughs> and I just looked at myself and I was like, well, I'm not gonna get that. Um, so <laughs> it's worth a shot. But it, it, there is this like, this yeah, mold of what is the idealistic version of what it means to be a man and how do we keep up with that. And um, I think, with social media and everything else around us, there's so many versions of what, what it means to, to have a good appearance and, and you become vain after a certain thing. No one's checked in with themselves right now. And I think that's, um, that's something we wanted to explore and also allow it to see how it breaks you down inside when you're not actually working on that core. Yeah. Also, shout out to Taylor Russell. Yes. And Emily, yeah. who plays Emily. She's yeah. incredible. She's the best. Absolutely. Do just a couple more, right in the center, uh, yes. First off, thank you for this film. And secondly, um, I was wondering why you decided to um, go with the second protagonist, because you could obviously ended it after the first half, I guess. So that's my question. Yeah, these two, these two very distinctive characters. Um, maybe you could talk about the structure and how you, how you got to that point. Was it always, or when did it become these Two stories. Yeah, um, probably, it, like I was saying before, how it was evolving for over time, like probably halfway through that time, that's yeah. when the structure kind of clicked into place and the idea of a, a brother and a sister, you know? And I think I think the big thing for me too with, with movies and cinema, like perspective is such a privilege because you can, you can live and hear and see and feel through someone else's uh, uh, viewpoint in life, you know? Like, in our lives, we're only seeing through ourselves. So in this art, we can see another side. So I think the spirit, it, it's a lot of things. One big thing was like the idea of, broadly, like the idea of understanding how this tragedy happens and then um, trying to heal and get to the other side of it and sort of spiritually, um, I, the, the connection between siblings is such a unique connection, and to explore that between a, ma uh, between a man and then a woman, uh, a brother and a sister in this in this situation, I just thought was like really exciting and unusual, and I hadn't seen it before, and it felt, I don't know, it just felt spiritually right um, because uh, life can be like that, you know, um, and to share that between two human beings and their viewpoints made it about the yin and the yang and the two halves for the whole. I think one without the other wouldn't, to me, what it doesn't make sense. Like, what's the purpose, you know? So it was like, I don't know, that just became what it was forever. And, it, and spiritually, it felt really, really right for this. Yeah. And, and I don't know what everybody else thinks, but maybe, um, I see you about to raise your microphone, and maybe you'll add to this, but I, I observe that, that the family that we see in the first half of the movie, there's, there's disconnection or there's missed connection happening, but then there's this, this dramatic fracture that happens. And the second half, I think, and I've now been able to watch it a couple times, allows this family unit to kind of um, resolve some of that, some of that, um, what becomes disconnection and then dramatic fracture. And it kind of comes back together in a certain way after a really horrible kind of turning point. Yeah, I, I think I've, I've asked myself a lot, like why, why encourage people to come see this film, especially you know m people that are mothers or fathers or just all different ages, and 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 I think the structure of this film really displays that beautifully. Um, I think um, to be halfway through the movie when you think it's over um, is really kind of a metaphor for what's beautiful in this in, in kind of what life is. The idea that it is not over and people have to keep living beyond. And the people that you know, did not even you know, cause this to happen have to find a way to live beyond this kind of major event that seems you know, unforgivable, that seems like you cannot live beyond it, like on, for all intents and purposes, should be the end. Um, because the court said it's the end, as she said, and then we have to sit here for another half of the movie through the perspective of somebody else who is not responsible and find, um, find and, and we learn something. You know, this, this, this person that we've totally disregarded actually heals this family in a way and is the way forward. And so that, that to me is the reason
reason why you, you sit through something heart-wrenching is because it's an example that people keep going and the most surprising places will you know, afford you um, the greatest redemption, I think. Trey, Trey, Kelvin, Alexa, Renee, thank you so much for joining us to talk about the thank movie. Thank you for having us. Congratulations to all of you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you.